I have just Let's worked out where the record button is. So, uh, that was a warm up. And this is the real thing. This is Miranda. And uh, this is her family. And three years ago, they moved from Zimbabwe to Australia. Yes. And for a moment there, Canada was a contender. But, yeah. But Australia was easier. Australia right? was easier. So there we go. We've caught up. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, Australia was easier, and uh, we found ourselves here in Canberra. We came towards the end of April, and you know what that is like. Temperatures are, like, really going down. And, yeah, that was a shock to our system. Our first winter was terrible, terrible, because the house we lived in had no proper heating. The heating was in just one room. So you can imagine. <laughs> so, so you don't get cold, uh Winters in Zimbabwe? Uh, not where we lived, uh, because it's just, um, it, you really get below two digits in Zimbabwe. There are okay. some areas like in Manika land where you can get four degrees and the like, but we lived in a really, I would say, warm climate. All right. Yes. So just for people who are not aware, paint a picture of what Zimbabwe is like and the the, the background sort of reasons why you chose to okay. leave. So Zimbabwe is um, is a very beautiful country. It's been blessed and and uh, you know endowed with uh, I think almost every mineral you can think of. We've got the best um, diamonds, gold, platinum. Yeah, we've got all the good minerals. But I think. Um, uh, the economy was really going down, and we saw no opportunities for our children. So the country is has a lot of graduates, but they do not have jobs. So, yeah. So we thought we needed to look for greener pastures. Mm. Um, our main worry was uh, our kids were not going to be able to secure a job a jobs in Zimbabwe. So... We found ourselves here in Australia, and to be honest, we do not regret. Mm. Yes. But, but even then, it's still a difficult process, right? So, so what were some of those challenges for you moving to Australia? Okay, so I think um, the migration process itself will take about nine months to even two years for some people. So you have to prove um, that you are qualified. They will do a skills ass assessment for you. You will have to take an English test. Even though you are able to converse in English, you've learned in English, you still have to do a test. And I was fortunate because I went to what we called Group A schools. It was a private school. So I didn't have a challenge with the English test. So, yeah, I just passed uh, on the first try. But I've seen others who have written it 10, 15 times. And that's money, you know. Yes. It costs money. It's about $250 a sitting. Ooh. U.S. dollars, yes. Wow. Exactly. Okay. So... Those are some of the challenges. But again, um, just, you know, saying we're leaving the country to go to a foreign land, which you do not know anything about, to start all over again. That's big. That is big. Mm. With teenage boys. Mm. We are, uh, I was just 40 <laughs> when I moved. My husband was already in his 46, 7, thereabouts. So... Really hard. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And how did it um, test your faith? I think uh, for me, it made me trust in God more because you're going into a country that you know nothing of. You do not have friends. Um, you're just starting afresh. You do not have jobs. Mm. Yes. So you're coming with just little savings and just hoping that they will get you by until you get something. So we really relied upon God and we prayed a lot. We fasted a lot. We got to Australia and the first challenge we faced was accommodation. The things that they don't tell you about Canberra, mm -hmm. that the accommodation is very difficult to get. So we stayed for three weeks um, 
with someone and the kids were really getting agitated. They needed their own space and that was hard. So we couldn't even put them into schools because we didn't know where we'll end up staying. And I remember until at one time we were viewing properties and you were seeing kids, you know, uh, going to school and coming from school. And it was, oh, mom, I wish I could, you know, uh, be going to a school. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So. So um, what, looking back now, three years, mm -hmm. what, um, what can churches do to help new arrivals? Oh, yeah. I think um, the first thing that churches can do, uh, especially when people come to church and see that, oh, we've got new faces, um, probably just to find out how are you, if, do you have accommodation, do you have furniture, and probably just ask around the congregation if anybody has, you know, an investment property somewhere, instead of going with it direct to uh, to the rental companies, you know, mm. it, you, you're at an advantage if you know somebody who has a property. So that makes it easy for you. Mm. But again, there's a challenge of trust because you don't know these people <laughs> mm. Mm. and you don't know if they're going to be able to pay rent. Yep. And yes. you, you ultimately, you had someone who just... Yes. Took a step of faith and said, oh, I'm exactly. Gonna trust, I'm gonna trust yes, you. yes. Yeah. So, our former landlord, um, it was a miracle, Anthony, because after having viewed, I remember that day, a Saturday, we viewed more than 13 properties. I got home where we were staying, and I said, God, I went into my room and I prayed and said, God, I'm tired. I need my own place. So, and then somebody says, Well, have you tried Gumtree? So we went on Gumtree and we saw a private advertiser. So we called him up and he says, oh, tomorrow is Mother's Day. Maybe you can come around 5 p.m. to view the property. So we went there. And, you know, the funny thing, I don't know where we spoke about God. Or I, don't, I don't know. He just asked, are you guys Christians? And we said, yes, we are. And that changed the whole conversation. Mm. Yes. And he said, oh, okay. So what, what are your backgrounds, your professions? And I said, okay, not that's fine. I'll talk to my wife. So he rang us in the evening and he said, my wife wants to come and see you. And I said, no, she can come. And literally they came with the keys and said, we've just decided to take a leap of faith with you guys. Here are the keys to the property. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't believe it. You know, I have my brother in Brisbane and I had put him as a, you know, core tenant or applicant yeah. and they never called him. They never asked for any any bank statement, nothing. Wow. They just said, we believe you'll get jobs. <laughs> yeah. So it's been like miracle after miracle. Miracle. And, and your story is a good story. Like yes. I hear of people who've really suffered much more yes. than you. Yes, yes. Um, what, uh, let, let's just talk, talk us through this photo and who's who and who, and where are you up to now? Like three years down the track. Okay. What so are you guys doing? <laughs> three years down the track. So obviously that's me. I'm the only female in the house. <laughs> and the guy in maroon is my husband, my dear husband of 22 years. Um, the little boy in the striped shirt is Atida. Yep. Atida is in year five. Yep. So at uh, St. Clair, he's uh, enjoying it. And the guy... So he's like 11? He's 10. ten. Yes, okay. 10. Yep. He's 10. He's a big 10. He's a big 10, <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a big 10. And the guy in glasses is Teddy. That's our first boy. Uh, he's in his third year at UNSW doing aeronautical engineering. That's all the hard amazing. stuff. Yeah. So he's like a maths genius. He's a maths genius. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredible. And yeah, I think he got that from me. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy in white is... Todd, popularly known as Todd. Uh, yeah, so this this is the popular guy, you know, in church, yeah, yeah. at he's school. The, he's the, the, the yeah. guy everyone wants to be friends with. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. And so um, you have your own house now. That's been like since the last sort of... Nine August. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. So yes. And what does that feel like? Like you, like no one can kick you out. Of it. No one can kick us out, and that is really amazing. You know the funny thing in Australia, which doesn't happen back home. You need to seek permission to put a wall hanger, <laughs> or to put any picture frame or any artwork. So, 
I'm happy I can do that in my own house mm. without any permission. Mm. Yes. So and, that feels great. And Amon has already started work <gasps> on his garden. His garden. He's yeah. forever in the garden. Yeah. yeah. So he's the gardener at home. And he's been growing vegetables, That's tomatoes, awesome. onions. It yeah. It must be so satisfying. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, look, just to wrap things up, if you could think of one Bible verse, one word of encouragement mm -hmm. for, for yourself, mm -hmm. like four years ago, what would it be? Oh, my God. Okay, for myself, uh, I'll probably think of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, you know, plans to prosper you, to bring you a future and hope. So for me, uh, I trust in God. I trust that he, he knows my future. Yeah. He knows my tomorrow, and I need to trust his plans for me. Uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, you can make your own plans, but the Lord has the ultimate say. So for me, you know, trusting God now and for the future will always be something that I'll hold on to. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much, Miranda, and thank you to the rest of your family, and we're done.